Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Now, what does it really mean to be disruptive? Well, despite being known as the disruptive entrepreneur, I actually have the trademark on that phrase, I thought rather than hearing it from one individual, it would be more fun and appropriate for you to hear it from multiple disruptive entrepreneurs, millionaires, billionaires, and some of the most disruptive, controversial people alive today. David Goggins, David Icke, Katie Hopkins, Jordan Peterson, a half dozen billionaires, you name it, I have got them together on this mashup episode uh, for the Disruptive Entrepreneur channel. So I think you're going to really enjoy it. I think it's something a bit different. I think in these divisive times, being disruptive and innovative and doing things in a different, challenging way is vital. Disrupting yourself before of someone else or a company or a virus or a competitor disrupts you. Now, I'm doing a little series at the moment on change, disruption and reinvention because, of course, right now the times are changing fast. It's survival of the fittest. It really is. Um, and also coming very soon is the launch of the new book, Reinvent Yourself with Gerald Ratner and myself. So um, that'll be live very soon. And you'll be able to hear that in future episodes on my YouTube channel, uh, the Disruptive Entrepreneur channel, and on my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur. So enjoy. Uh, this podcast um, is really about disruptors, disruptive people. Um, what does that word disruptive mean to you? I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is just what you said, disruptive people. For the majority of my life, people disrupted my life, but I allowed them to. Mm. But what happens is over a period of time, you become the disturbance mm. in your life because you allow all these disturbances to get in your head. Therefore, you have all this shit going on, but you become your biggest bully. Yeah. And once that happens, it's over. Mm. Once that happens, it's over because all you have in your mind on literally on a loop is negative self-talk. Yeah. And once that negative self-talk is on a loop, it's hard to get out of it. Mm. Someone once said to me, um, the, 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 best thing, the best way to disrupt is to disrupt yourself before someone else does competitions, friends, whatever. Do you have a thought on that about you taking control of challenging yourself so someone else doesn't own your life? That's the whole thing I talk about, winning the battle in the morning. So every morning I wake up, I believe in winning the battle against yourself. People say, why do you say that? Because there's a lot of things you can control. When you wake up, I talk about making your bed. Make your bed, make sure your house is clean, make sure you get your breakfast, make sure you shower, shave, whatever you're doing, control that. Don't hit the snooze button. All these things are very important. That's been told a lot of times. Why don't you hit the snooze button? Because you wake up already failing. You're already mm. behind the power curve. So what happens when you hit the snooze button? You may not make your bed. You may not do your hair the way you want it. You may not pick the right clothes out in the morning time. And I go back to this real quick. Remember how you had a job interview for a job? We've had several of them in our lives. What did you do the night before that job, weeks before the job interview, when you knew you had it? You prepared your, you know, you had a bowl out for your oatmeal, your cereal, whatever you had in the morning time. Your coffee cup was out. Your clothes were laid out. You studied, you rehearsed, you were ready. You brought your best self. Mm. You were going to war with yourself because you wanted that interviewer to see your best self. You won. You got the job. After a few months in that job, you look around. Mm, I got the job. You start to back off. The clothes aren't out. You're not ready. You're hitting the snooze button. You don't get up on time anymore. You realize that you can still have this job and not be your best self. The interview you is gone. Your job is gone. You have your job, but the interview you is gone. So winning the battle in the morning time is just that. It's that you wake up in the morning time and you own all this stuff because once you leave your house, the world then gets at you. And that's why I believe in not, not, not getting up in the morning time and checking your phone immediately. Everybody does that. They get up, the first thing they do is they grab their phone. Look at the phone. Maybe bad news on there. Mm. So how's your day start off? I don't go to the gym. I don't make my bed. I don't, you're caught up now on that phone. That's how your day starts. You lost control. So once you win that, once you win that battle in the morning time, then once you go out, now you've won. You go outside your house, you may lose your job. You may have a bad hit, but you won something. So, you, so you're going into battle having already won something. Having already won. So then if you hit the snooze button, you go out, you're just defeated already. You're behind the power curve. Now you've won something. You feel better about yourself. Mm. So now you're able to take these hits along the way. Yeah. 
So that's the mindset that I think it's important to bring with you every day you go, mm. everywhere you go in life. Win uh, what you can. Well, the other thing, too, is we could get the ethics about this right. It's like, well, is there something wrong with, with generating money? It's like, well, it depends on what you're going to do with the money. Mm. You know, like if you're going to spend it all on hookers and cocaine, then probably that's reprehensible. But if you're going to... Well, it still employs the hookers. Well, <laughs> you know, the hookers it's still a commercial. It, that's right, the hookers might not think it's reprehensible. I suppose neither do the cocaine growers. But, you know, you can, you can argue that there are better and worse things that you could do with your money. Mm. If you're guilty about making money, then maybe you should think harder about what the hell you're going to do with the money. Because yeah. there's some good things you can and do with And why you feel guilty about making money well, in the first yes, place and where that comes yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, and w and what's productive about you say? Well, I don't want to be greedy. It's like okay, yeah, yeah. don't be greedy. Yeah. Good rule. But you know, you have a family. You could support them. You could invest the money in the community. There's all sorts of positive things that you could do with your money if you were very, very thoughtful yeah. about how you decided to spend it. People don't get so, this. Sorry to jump in. Yeah, People no don't problem. get that Mother Teresa was basically a money launderer. They just mm -hmm. don't get this. A lot of her money came from Robert Maxwell, and you know, a lot of people that would be reprehensibly mm -hmm. evil to most of society. But she would take money, she didn't mind where it came from, and then she would do her work with said money. So, yeah, instead of being guilty about yeah. making money, you could think hard about what yes, it I'll is take that you the want money. to do with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do something useful with mm. it and productive. Yeah, that's a much... And I would say that's also your response... If you happen to be one of those people to whom money is disproportionately flowing, right, because you've started to become successful, and you've hit that acceleration mm. point where you're getting more because you already have, then the ethical requirement isn't to be guilty about that, but to think, okay, how can I use this money which I have been bequeathed in the most responsible manner possible? Mm. And that's a perfectly reasonable thing to think, and you can do that with some error. Yeah. So... Of course. So, if something solidifies... Um, it basically doesn't change. Um, and if it's something that's not good, well, that's not good, that it's solidified. And we have a society that's solidified. There's so many gimmies. Um, and what I mean by gimmies is that things are accepted as if, well, that's how things are. And the greatest, one of the greatest forms of mind control is familiarity. Because when something becomes familiar, it becomes a gimme. And gimme things are not questioned, they're accepted. For instance, um, taking a child who's just come into this world at the age of three or four and putting them through that sausage machine all day, five days a week, uh, um, f for all the formative years, called education, actually programming, that's a gimme. Well, that's how things are. Kids go to school. Yeah, but take a deep breath. Look at its effect. Let's question it. And when you start uh, questioning the gimmies, questioning the, 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 the solidification of accepted how things are, it's my daughter. Yeah. Um, perfect timing. Perfect timing. <laughs> uh, I brought her up well. Um, then, um, of course, you need to disrupt the solidification mm. for things to be changed. And, and, you know, if you want a quiet life, anything for a peaceful life, then nothing's ever going to change. You have to disturb things for them to change. And when you disturb things, they go into a state of flux before um, uh, 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 they, they reform in a different way. Mm. So you can have... Um, a perception of disturbance is oh, like, oh no I don't want change mm. or you can have a perception of disturbance which is a very positive thing because unless you disturb what needs changing it won't change mm. yeah honestly I think someone who is incredibly in touch with their intuition their heart their what well, their internal personal power and then they go about expressing in the world Mm. as opposed to a mimicking entrepreneur. This is the way Gary Vaynerchuk does it. This is the way Rob Moore does it. We want to learn from all those, but we also want to be conscious of the miracle of our own self and letting that hooligan out. When you do that, because so few, few people are willing to pursue those ideas that matter to them, people call it disruption. Right, but really, all it is is self confidence and your convictions. Yeah, and I, as we talked about earlier, pursuing that cause that's completely worthy. 
Yeah. And you look at the people like Elon Musk, all of his PayPal money, put it all into space travel and electric cars. This is not, and this is what then we call that disruption. This is a guy that had a really noble cause that was great enough to, to risk it all. Um, and he had the confidence to do it. And you know, and that's what disruption is, I think. Mm. I think it's probably misunderstood. I think people think disruptors are people that sit and they, they're like fucking Einstein and they're reimagining the nature of the world and they, they see all the dots connecting and perfect. I don't think it's that. I think you have one singular pursuit or belief, you back yourself and you're willing to put in the hard work and you have the persistence to see it through. And then the world looks at you and says disruptor. Mm. You often don't think you are, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like a, lot with a, lot, a lot with a lot of the greats. It's something that other people attri attribute to you after the fact, so mm. yeah. Um, what does the word disruptive mean to you? Um, not the norm, uh, moving people uh, or things away from the norm and doing things differently mm. and that is more important and relevant today than at any time in our history yeah disruptive to me can mean a few things um probably a good company out there to say disruptive would be uber uber is probably disruptive mm. so if you think back to the black taxis Black tech, you used to have to do the knowledge. It would take you years before you could become a black cab driver. Mm. Uber's come along, don't really need much. You can yeah. go there on your sat nav and you can drive around. They've messed up mm. the whole taxi, taxi field. So you had black cabs, you had Addison Lee, and now you've got Uber. They're disruptive. They're disruptive mm. to the industry. They've come out there now and they're like, we are here, we're gonna change it. We don't care what has happened all these years. We're gonna come in and just mess up the whole thing. And that's what they've done. Like Deliveroo, Ooh. another example. Everyone used to order Deliveroo, it was they're always making, Indian and Chinese. They're making thousands of pounds out of me, they are. But, but <laughs> yeah. Deliveroo, they'll, they'll go and take food from anywhere else. Yeah. It's about thinking outside the box and what's not the norm. Mm. Even with me in the rap industry, car wrapping, everyone, car wrapping was known. But who went out there and got the celebrities? Who went out there and got the high-end cars? Who went out there and done it all in-house? Mm. I don't outsource. So. It's about being different. And I think if you're different, some people don't like difference, mm. but if you're strong enough and you keep pumping away, pumping away, eventually people will come around and be like, you know what, that actually works. Mm. You know what, I'm actually gonna go that way. And I feel sorry for people like the black cab drivers because they had to do their graph. Mm. They're on their little mopeds, doing the knowledge, and you just got Uber now that just come along. And listen, it's a great concept. I don't yeah. use Uber, I don't really get taxis, but mm. just, just that as, as, a, as a business, mm. fantastic. Disruptive means not accepting the way it's always been done, not assuming that just because experts, air quotes, experts, people before you did it that way, that that makes it the right way. Don't accept the rules. Don't assume that the people that wrote the books were smarter than you. Um, leave open the possibility that there might be a better way to do this and give it a shot. Uh, again, you know, you don't should never feel fa fear failure. You should fear not trying. So that's what disruptives is all about, is to actually believe, even if people are laughing at you, there might be a better way to do this. I see a brand new opportunity and I'm gonna give it a shot. Even if all the experts are telling you that's not the way it works, what you should be saying to yourself in silence is, well, it might be soon because I'm gonna disrupt this industry. We did that with travel. Um, and you know, we were some little startup and people were saying, who are you? Right, we have these multi-zillion dollar airlines, hotel companies, big people, way smarter than you, way more successful, but you think you can re-engineer the travel industry? And alone at home in our quiet, tiny little office with fold up furniture, we said, uh, yeah, we kind of think we can. Disruption about is about believing that you might be the person redesigning an industry. Because I think, yeah, sometimes it's disruption. I was asking myself the question about the internet, good or bad. The other day and I've always been a big advocate for it it's transformed our business mm. but there are a lot of negatives that are coming out of the disruption that's going on at yeah. the moment so no, it's become more ambivalent to me what you know disruption good or bad Is there and, an and I think topic? I think we should think carefully about you know the social side of you know social media you know how, how it affects people's lives mm. you know and there, there's a lot of sort of mental illness at work there's a lot of people struggling for reasons that would have surprised people 30 years ago. Mm. You think, why is that? Yeah. So, so I think we as entrepreneurs have a duty to think about that mm. 
and maybe come up with some new ideas to help yeah. address that. Mm. So, I, yeah, I love change. I, I, I love the, the challenge of improving things. But disruption without moderation or unmoderated disruption can yeah. be harmful. True disruption is really about, you know, going into a market and, you know, going into finding a much better way of doing things. And as a result of that, basically putting most of the people that are currently delivering that good of service out of business or force them to adapt and change to your way of doing things. So it's, it's about coming up with a better mousetrap, so to speak. I mean, I feel I'm a bit disruptive, to be honest. Um, it's shaking things up. It's not playing by the rules. It's doing things your way. It's adding some spice and some sass and some sauce. Pioneer of... Uh, like, like the English is with the Bremen Watch. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's about being a pioneer. It's about not following the, the, the traditions and norm. It's mm. about breaking the status quo in everything you do. Yeah. Because, you know, opportunity, the growth is not in a predefined path. Mm. It means you're going to change things, you know, but, uh, you know, pe people need to, you, you need to be profitable, not just disruptive. Mm. Like, because if, you, if you're not profitable, you're not going to be disruptive. Yeah. So I think a lot of people are just trying to make a lot of noise. It's like the influencer. They want to be an influencer. Dude, if you, if you don't make money, you're not going to influence much for very long. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to do that now. So to me, I'm trying to, I'm looking at various markets and trying to work out a way to disrupt them which is i'm not trying to reinvent them or create new ones i was trying to find a way i'm using the blue ocean strategy approach to it really yeah. trying to find a way to disrupt the incumbents so yes take their customers off them and offer them a service or solution in a way in which they just can't yeah so that's just going to disrupt them or disintermediate in some cases yeah. but disrupt them in terms of they can't do it because of the way they are the way they think the way they operate but if you're an entrepreneur these days and you leverage technology you can disrupt a lot of big companies. The point to remember, and actually a founder of um, a fintech company recently said to me, it's a good point you made, is that you can be disruptive, but I love the challenger banks. You can be disruptive, and think you're being disruptive, you're disrupting the big guys, incumbents, but do not underestimate the big guys, the incumbents. I've done that in the past. They have a lot of money, yeah. a lot of time, a lot of resource, yeah. and when they say, oh, hang on a minute, he's disrupting us, <laughs> yeah. and they throw that at you, they can slowly, it might be all tanker speed, but unless you're moving at jet ski speed, yeah. they're going to run you over. Yeah. And often, that's what can happen. You've got to be disruptive in a way where there is clear water. You are doing things that doesn't matter what they try and do in this large organization, I'm talking about disrupting existing markets here, yeah. uh, they can never do what you are doing, because it's not in their DNA. Yeah. Well, and their makeup to do it or to do it that way. Being disruptive would be, and I guess we touched upon it in, in the podcast, but being disruptive would be kind of being unconventional, going outside probably the regular person's comfort zone in, in a need to achieve. You know, that's being disruptive. Not going, kind of like the old quote is, is a cliche, be a shepherd, not a sheep. Mm. Don't follow the crowd and do what you're expected to do. Hi, it's Rob. Quick interruption here to make sure you like this video and you subscribe to the channel. We are upping our content game, bringing you the most disruptive interviewees and guests and content, and not just the people who do the usual circuit. So make sure you like, subscribe, and now let's get back to the interview. And so disruption for me is about not being satisfied with going along with everything because it's easier. It's always easier to swim downstream. And of course, if you're one of the fish that wants to swim downstream because that's what you think, sure, go, go, go. It's always going to be harder to swim upstream, but it's totally worth the effort. So I believe, and I tell my kids every day, all the best people are mad. All the best people are weird. And the more weird and the mad you are, and the, the more alone you find yourself, I believe you're probably heading in the right direction. And if you feel really alone and you need someone who's known for being a cow to back you up, then do always email me and I'll always be there. Mm. But yeah, swim upstream and you'll be all right. Mm. This podcast called The Disruptive Entrepreneur. Is it? That's yeah. What it yeah. Was. yeah. Uh, not the realistic entrepreneur. <laughs> so that word, what does that mean to you, disruptive? Disruptive means disrupt, like fuck things up, like have a go, don't go with the flow. And I'm sort of not like that because I'm a confused disruptor because I'm actually quite conservative with a small C. I'm actually quite establishment. I quite like things being stable. I quite like the way things run, but I hate injustice. I hate bullies. I hate people 
who kind of force their views on other people. So disruptive to me means don't go with the norm. Like mm. just there, there is no norm. What the fuck does norm mean? And if something becomes norm, it normally means that a lot of people like it. So probably it's a bit boring and it's just like a everyone's gone for it. So just. Mm. Do what you want, man. Yeah. That was a terrible... No, it was great. No, it was great. It was. Really I loved wasn't. it. No, it wasn't. That first sentence, we yeah. could definitely pick that. No, no, all the rest of oh, no, no, we're not cutting any of it out. <laughs> no, 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 not it. cutting any of it out. Yeah. It's well, kind of disruptive means shaking things up, you know? And I think I do that because, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I'm, I wasn't probably as uh, knowledgeable as I am now, but I simply didn't follow the... Mm the line, you know? Yeah. When I started bodybuilding, I was doing everything different and yeah. experienced guys in the gym were like, ah, that's not gonna work, you know? <laughs> you know? I was like, all right, let, let's see. Yeah. Um, so it was di disruptive in that way. Everybody, you know, in England was like, well, not everybody, but I felt like a lot of people were saying to me, come on, man, yeah. you, you can't go to the States and beat those guys <laughs> over there. They're not even human. They're like, yeah. oh, they're here, you know, they're not a different, planet you know mm. right, they've got bigger gyms so they've got probably access to better food and information and mm. stuff but nobody is going to work harder than me um so it's disruptive in that uh point and uh anyone watch my london reels is probably quite disruptive because my opinions are not conventional mm. uh, the way i do things are not conventional so that's disruptive and i think you know, we need to be disruptive sometimes. Things need to be shaken up mm. and, uh, you know, yeah. uh, people's uh, opinions and views sometimes need to be shaken up a little bit. Mm. Uh, so it's not something I think about. It's just, it's just me being me naturally, yeah. you know. I didn't, uh, I've always been somewhat of a, an individual and a, and a rebel, you know. So mm. um, I guess that's reflected in most things I do. Mm. Do you enjoy proving people wrong? Disruptive to me is actually going to sound ironic. Disruptive to me is to live truth to yourself. And so to do what is true to you, what your heart tells you to do and drown out the noise. Everybody in the world today is conforming to what other people think they should be or what they should be doing. So a disruptive human is like you and me. I'm doing my thing. And I, I have to get to a point in your, you have to get rather to a point in your life where you're willing to take the heat for being you for chasing your real dream, for going after it when nobody believes it, nobody thinks it's possible, there's no evidence you should do it, you have a track record of failing already at it, but there's this part of you inside that's like, man, I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna stay excited until the job gets done. That's a disruptive person who's willing to be true to themselves. It's the person who's got cancer who keeps freaking fighting when the doctor says, you got three months. You're a disruptive motherfucker when you keep <laughs> fighting during those times. You're an entrepreneur and nothing's going right. Everyone thinks you're out of your mind. You know what's disruptive? To stay true to your voice, to stay true to your calling, to get after it. So I love disruptive people because disruptive people have one thing other people, they won't conform and they will take the damn heat. Most people hate the heat. They hate the rejection. They hate the pain. They hate being ostracized. They hate the negativity. They hate the struggle. They can't deal with it, so they won't disrupt. They conform. Mm. And so for me, it's lack of conformity. It's being you. The opposite are quite different from the way people are looking at uh, a particular business problem. Uh, you come in with something off of left field mm. to everyone else. Disruptive means someone who challenges conventional thinking, for me. So you can be destructive, that's different, but disruptive's good. I like mm. disruptive, you know, mm. it's what you want. When yeah. the world zigs, zag. Mm. When everyone goes one way, go another way, you know, because that challenges conventional thinking. So disruptive for me doesn't, you know, you can, can be disruptive in the classroom, that's slightly different, you know. Yeah. Throwing things at your teacher can be quite disruptive, but actually just, just challenging conventional thinking is, mm. is what disruptive means to me. Against the normal, which are quite like that. Um, I've never been one for, for the norm. I, I think because of my musical background and, and everything like that, it's always to do things the opposite way because mm. that's what passionate people love, love to do. So that's what it, it, that's what it means to me, you know. Mm. It, it, it means change, changing things and doing things differently. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to do things differently in Dragon's Den. Uh, they said, don't sing the song. 
Yeah. 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 yeah, you couldn't deny me of my passion. Yeah, I had yeah. to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, you're talking to the girl that's got Little Rascal yeah, written on her. I wanted to ask her. about that. <laughs> um, How did you get the typewriter to get it on your arm? <laughs> um, Edit that one out. <laughs> I, I thought that was a red ant for a while. The 17, is it 79? What does 79 mean? Um, that that's one's the year kind I was born, of... by the way. That's what it is. That's a sign. Yeah. Mm. I was like, well, I got it just before I came here today. Oh, cool, because yeah. you fact did a big did your research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, um, they all mean different things. Yeah, so what does 79 mean? <laughs> it's a long story. It's all right, we've got time. <laughs> Um, no, because it makes me sound like it, it makes me sound okay. So myself and my flatmate, we bought a flat together, um, and it was really hard to buy a flat together because usually you can't do that unless you are related or unless you're married. Mm. We're just two mates. We bought a house together. Um, I own. He, it was his idea to get the numbers. He got a pie chart actually with like twenty one percent cut out of it. But I yeah. thought it looked like a clock, so I didn't want to get that. <laughs> so he was like, "Just get seventy nine then." But now I've got seventy nine written on my and I own seventy nine percent of the house. Right. And it kind of just sounds like, oh. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. it's not. And so uh, yeah, so that's why I got seventy nine. Um, Li little rascal. Little rascal, because I feel like I'm in that stage of my life yeah. where I'm like really am being just a little rascal to people. Mm. Um, if I had more courage, I'd do a tattoo. But what would this it is say? A, um, the disruptive entrepreneur. I think that'd be a bit egocentric, wouldn't it, to tattoo the name of my podcast on me? Yeah, but the tattoo, could, like, it could have been first that you were like, I am. It could be just disruptive. Disruptive, yeah, yeah, same yeah. thing. So to answer your question, I think that dis being disruptive is actually great. Well, I mean, unless it's on like the night tube, in which case, shut up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Can't stand it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Disruptive within those situations, like, you know, the entrepreneurial world, I think yeah. is very exciting. Things when they are not just incremental, but they are exponential. Because to me, and when you become an expert, you become useless at those things. And those things, experts can only improve something 10% or 15%. And those are incremental. When you are outside the industry, you are able to make it something 10 times or 100 times better. So the disruption happens when you're no longer incremental when something changes at least by 10x. Now, do you know what? I would look at, personally, disruptive probably leans more to a good thing for me because it's a bit like if there's a meeting of the top dogs going on, I'd feel no way about going in there and be like, <laughs> guys, listen, I'm, and just making myself disruptive and... Yeah. and you know, I think that's the one thing that, that music constantly does. You're always disrupting the airwaves and, and, and always guiding people's vision and eyeline and, and ears. Because mm. you're trying to go, I'm over here. Hey, don't, don't look at him. I'm yeah, over here. Yeah. That's what I do on a, I mm. suppose, a, a, daily, a daily basis. Yeah. That, you're, that you're willing to totally rethink um, a situation. Even, Love how you got your book even, tied in there. Yeah. Even if you, um, even if if people feel that it's breaking some glass, yeah. and it's gonna um, disrupt the status quo, it's gonna upset the status quo, that you're willing to do it. And I think that that most successful entrepreneurs would believe that would would not even focus on the disruption piece. Because they would assume that away. They would they would say like like I, I don't really care if that happens because I have a goal in mind and I'm going to reach that goal mm. and I'm going to go forward until I get that goal accomplished. And all the noise that they're creating around them, they won't really worry about too much. Yeah. The, and they'll they'll not only will they suspend judgment, they'll suspend reality if they have to. Mm to get to that goal.